Christopher is a former New York City Police Commissioner, the top police job here in the city, and he joins us for a few moments. Mr. Safer, what do you see? When I see. You look at that. What do you see? I see something that's unimaginable. I see our, what is a police commissioner's worst nightmare. Uh, this is a situation uh, that obviously was well planned, well coordinated, and you know the loss of life that's taking place down there is just incredible, and is going to strain the emergency services of this city to the hilt. Are, are you? Are you hearing any specific information? Are you hearing anything about the number of injuries, the number of fatalities, the number of people in that building, those buildings? Are you getting any of that information from well, I, I know there colleagues? Are, I know there are 50,000 people who work in the World Trade Center. I, I know that every ambulance and every fire company in the city uh, and has been called in and dispatched there. Uh, it's unimaginable, but the loss of life is going to be huge. You're as familiar with the city's plan or plans for these kinds of uh, incidents as anyone in the city. Uh, in all honesty, does the plan cover the scope of what appears to have happened here? No. Uh, we have an Office of Emergency Management. Uh, the plans for responding to a disaster are probably as good as any in the world, but nobody ever would contemplate that we would lose the two World Trade Centers and in this manner. Tell me what's happening there, would you guess, in the sense that what, what are police doing? What's the first thing that has to happen? Triage? The first thing is triage. The first thing is to identify who can be treated, who cannot be treated, uh, to get those ambulances to hospitals. Every hospital's emergency room is open and I'm sure working right now. And this is just a situation, it's like a war zone and you have to logistically treat it like a war zone. You have to have your front lines, you have to have your support, and you have to have people who are constantly in there doing something. You know, I, I was also fire commissioner before I was no. police commissioner, and you know, it's no longer an issue, unfortunately, but a high-rise fire like that is almost impossible to fight. At this point, has, would, would you say that every police officer, and there are what, 40,000? We have 41,000 41, police officers. 41,000 police officers in the city have been called in. Oh, every one of them. I know every firefighter has been called And in. how many firefighters? Uh, there are 14,000 firefighters, and I'm sure we'll be getting help with equipment uh, from our adjoining communities as well. I mean, this is a logistical exercise that makes the first attack on the World Trade Center, you know, relatively small. Because of its scope? Because of its scope. And, and its place in the building itself, that it was high up in the building, does that complicate things? It, it, it does. Once you get above the 10th floor in a fire, it's almost impossible to fight a high-rise fire above the 10th floor, except by sending firefighters up there and using hose stands, then you run into water pressure problems. It, I was just thinking about this. Uh, not long after the World Trade Center bombing, uh, the engineer who designed the World Trade Center told me that the World Trade Center was designed to withstand a 707 direct impact. Well, obviously, that wasn't the case. It seems not. Um, we are, we are getting reports and we are